Hey there, this is James. Oh, hey. hi, hi, James. It's Laura Sam and Tony here. Hey, nice to talk to you guys. Thank you so much for giving up your time. We really appreciate it. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I went to your concert exactly. 15 years ago, so it's, it's good and to finally meet you. He hasn't stopped talking about it, to be fair. <laughs> 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 um, wow, well, that was a long, long time ago. That was back to Bedlam um, times. Yeah, and it, it was it was a brilliant time. It was a brilliant album. How, how much has changed in 15 years? Uh, I just shot a video um, for my new single called Cold, and uh, and it's a sequel to the Your Beautiful video. Where you know, in that video, I've thrown myself off a cliff, having removed half my clothes, most of my clothes. <laughs> in this one, um, I, having landed in the water, and now in cold, I managed to swim back to shore and find all my clothes again and my possessions. And weirdly, they're actually the identical clothes. They're not just similar ones, but they're identical. No I've kept them in my cupboard, hanging for 15 years in my home in Ibiza, in the cupboard. I've seen them every day and thought that would be weird to put those clothes on, um, put on something else instead. But for the video, they're the same ones. I've just had to suck in a bit for making the video. Wow, I'm so impressed that you can still fit them. You never thought when you're doing a clean out, you know, with this big skip bin that, oh, I'll get rid of that outfit. Well, you know, I just thought I could never do that because they're, they're, they're the clothes from your beautiful. No, and, and absolutely right. Um, is it hard to write romantic, beautiful songs about your family when you're in Ibiza? Um, yes, it's impossible to write uh, those kind of songs when I'm in Ibiza. And so I go to places like LA, um, to studios there, or London, or Nashville, because in Ibiza I'm just too hungover. <laughs> So we know that you're good mates with Ed Sheeran. There was a documentary that we watched um, about his songwriting process, and it was quite interesting. How? What is your songwriting process? Do you go away? When you go away, do you lock yourself in a room with a whole bunch of your mates and have a few drinks and a couple of durries yeah, and hope normally, for the best? Normally I just wait for someone to die and then uh, write about how I feel. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. oh um, well, that works. Uh, something, something miserable is pretty inspiring, and I normally wait for something to, to move me in that way. And then uh, I try and cash in on it, I suppose. To be, to be fair, um, the, the, you know, you, you have, you wrote, you've you written about being away from your children and you, your poor dad that's how, waiting for a kidney transplant. How was your dad? Yeah. And, yeah, he's still alive, just. Um, so my dad, he needs a kidney. He's waiting. He, his kidney's failed. And so uh, the really real reason I'm speaking to you is he's an O-positive blood, blood group. And if you are O-positive and got a spare kidney, I'll take one um, for him. <laughs> Uh, but I've but I've written a song for him called Monsters, and and it's you know it says I'm not your son, you're not my father. We're just two grown men saying goodbye. No need to forgive, no need to forget. I know your mistakes, and you know mine. Um, and it's it's really to tell my father that you know I've idolised him all my life, but um, but he's not just my father; he's my friend too. Surely, if oh, anyone can find a kidney. You know, you you yeah. are the person that can find it for him. Have you not had people sort of rushing forward and saying, "Here, take mine"? Um, yeah, it's a pretty big, big deal, I think, to give one, you know, to give one away, isn't it? I'm not mash myself, but it's a pretty big um, commitment. We have, you know, it, um, so we'll see. He's on the waiting list. We'll see what happens. Yeah, oh, well, all the very best for that. I want to talk to you about um, a Christmas time because, you know, I, I listen to your music and I think you would be very, very good with a Christmas album and yet you've let Robbie Williams sneak in in front of you this year. What's going on? Um, you know, well, I, I think Christmas is a happy time. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, again, I, I'm kind of, my songs are quite miserable, aren't they? Oh, I mean, The Grinch was miserable. <laughs> maybe you're right. But then his heart um, grew. So I mean, there's right. a positive well, you know end. My single that's out now, the single that's out now is called Cold. It's for my wife. It's because I'm away on tour a lot. Um, and I leave her with a young family to pick up the pieces while I'm off chasing a dream around the world. And maybe you're right. Maybe that is a good Christmas song because it talks about the ocean between us. But it says, without you, I'm just cold. Well, let's listen to a wee snippet of that because it is a gorgeous song. But I don't want to let go of the things that keep me warm. Without you, I'm just I mean, I think we, we've all got kids in the studio and, and we all know what it's like. But Sam here, um, the male of the show, he's got a very brand new son. And Sammy, can you imagine spending the same amount of time that James has to spend away from, you know? Mate, it must be so hard. So my son is nine months old and I occasionally sing your songs to him. What do you sing to your boys? Um, well, um, they have better taste than, than, uh, than that. But they, they don't, don't say that. Oh. Don't say that. Your music is brilliant. <laughs> um, 
Uh, well, you know what? I mean, weirdly, you talk about big going away. I mean, you know, I, I literally, on my last tour was 18 months uh, long. So I was away from home for 18 months, which in a, in a young family's life is ridiculous. Yes. I mean, to come back and find them 18 months later is is terrible. So, um, But they've, they've occasionally come on the road and they've, uh, and for, for a month at a time or so. And yeah, and then having them on the side of the stage is amazing. You, you used to say in an interview that um, sleep was a waste of time. It helps to be nocturnal in your job. Now that you've got kids, do you still stick <laughs> that to that, that theory? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that just means that I'm the one up in the middle of the night, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still not running on much sleep. So you're wonderfully outspoken. One of our favourite things to do is look at your Twitter because it provides much entertainment. You're very outspoken about things that, uh, how, how you feel. Now, when you look at what's happening to Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, does that upset you? Because they're obviously your mates. We saw you looking, you and your wife looking gorgeous at their wedding. They're obviously your mates. Does that really upset you, what the media is doing to them and how that's playing out? Um, well, what I know of them, I know him to be a great soldier. He was a, a, a phenomenal soldier in the same regiment as me. I know that both of them are heavily involved in charity. Um, they are uh, fallible as humans, of course, um, but, um, uh, but they are still humans um, trying to do their best um, in quite a public scenario. Uh, and, I think, um, and I think they are given a, a harder time than makes me feel comfortable. And I think sometimes um, we sit around and allow other people to say things um, about them, which I would, I would say turn around to bullying, and I think it's not fair. Mm. Mm. Do you think that gets heightened once you have children? I mean, you would know that because you've had the media glare before kids, now after kids. I think bullying is bullying whatever age. I guess um, the way that you've dealt with, with it is comedy, though, and, and passing it off with humour. Does it still hurt you, or is it literally water off a duck's back? It's water off a duck's back with me. Um, you know, I'm, because because I, I I'm really really lucky. Um, I get to I get to go on tour around the world, and people turn up to these concerts, and, and amazingly, unfortunately for me, in, in their thousands. And so I can um, you know maybe get a, a bit of negativity online. But those people, that, you know, those two negative comments from people, you know, who are probably mm. hiding away in the darkness in their bedrooms. Um, I kind of are kind of made up for by the tens of thousands of people who are turning up each night on a on a tour. Um, mm. If I was really focusing on the two negatives, I'd be I'd be mad. Um, I should be giving the credit and the thanks and the you know gratitude to those who are actually turning up to the shows. So the reality far outweighs the kind of the madness that we see online. Online world, it's not, people aren't very nice to each other there. Um, the real world, people seem to be much nicer. So I think we should just throw away our smartphones, look each other in the eye, and we'll have a much nicer time. You're such a wonderful paradox. I mean, you write these beautiful song lyrics, but we know you as a bit of a party boy. And and, and in your song from Back to Bedlam, Tears and Rain, you say, um, how I wish I could choose between heaven and hell. Where do you think you're going to end up? Oh, jeez. I'm That's definitely not getting into heaven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know me too well. Um, but I have, um, but you know what? I have a very um, sweet song at the very start of my album. It's called The Truth. And it talks about me. I've been a single man touring the world, getting away with blue murder and have a, having a fantastic time. But the journey has brought me to where I am now as a happily married man. And, and I couldn't be in a better place. And that's the truth. Fantastic. And there's still a lot of years to get yourself back into heaven, James Blunt. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, the album is oh, Once sweet. Upon a Mind. Uh, we look forward to it. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Lovely to talk to you guys. You take care. Thank you so much. Sweet.